Today we're going to talk about one of the most heated topics in software development and game development. It's something that comes up all the time, and it's singletons. Some people think, hey, they're okay, they're great. Other people think this is the worst thing that's ever happened, you should never be using them. And some people are kind of in between. So today I want to talk about what singletons are, why you should or should not use them, how I may maybe use them, and uh, I want to talk a lot about why they're hated and what the arguments against them are as well. Now, if you don't know what singletons are, make sure that you watch this through to the end. You're going to get some really invaluable information. And if you do know what singletons are and you have some thoughts about them, drop a comment down below before we get started. I'm curious to see where you are at the beginning and if that changes at the end of the video. Let's start with the definition of a singleton, and you don't want to just search for a singleton definition on Google. You'll find some results that are interesting, but not exactly what we want. We want the singleton pattern, and the singleton pattern in software engineering is a software design pattern that restricts the instantiation of a class to a single instance. This is useful when exactly one object is needed to coordinate actions across the system, and it says here that the term actually comes from that mathematical concept in the other definition that we found. Now if we scroll down a little bit more we can see that it says here the singleton design pattern is one of the 23 well-known gang of four design patterns from the old design patterns book that describe how to solve recurring design problems to design flexible and reusable object-oriented software with the aim of making it easier to implement change test and reuse objects. So it's essentially a pattern that's described from way back then and it was of course used I think quite a while before then too, and that's kind of how they came to describe it. So why, why is this pattern so big? Why does it come up so often? And uh, why is there a big giant section on criticism? And why does it say that it's sometimes considered to be an anti-pattern? That's what we're gonna get into today. But before we move on, this video is sponsored by Serenix. They're the creators of my favorite Unity tool, which I've already talked about many times before and used for almost every project, the Odin Inspector. The Inspector is a powerful, user-friendly editor extension, which helps speed up my workflow. And now I'm excited that Serenix just released their new Odin Validator, which includes a ton of new features and improvements. The Validator now lets you do real-time validation while working on your project, which means you'll get notified as soon as an issue appears in your project. You can now easily configure custom rules, and they've even added three additional built-in attributes to help boost productivity. The validator has been rebuilt from scratch to be better and faster with a more intuitive and user-friendly console. Go check out Serenix and their amazing tools by clicking the link in the description. Let's start by taking a quick look at a singleton in C Sharp, and then we'll dive into what a singleton looks like in Unity, talk about why they're different, and go on to all of the other stuff that I've got to say about it, and there's really a lot to say. So a C Sharp singleton is really a class that has a static reference to an instance of itself. Here you can see that they use the class name singleton, which in my opinion kind of makes it confusing. This could be any class name. This could be player, audio manager, game manager, random thing. The class name doesn't necessarily matter. It just has to match here. So what they do is they create a class and then they create a static instance of that class. You usually name it something like instance or singleton. You probably wouldn't want to have a class with a singleton named singleton. Personally, I, I don't prefer, prefer the name singleton for an actual class in my examples, but that's what they've got here. And then you can see the way that it works is there's a constructor that does absolutely nothing. And then there's a public get property or public get only property that returns back a singleton. This is static. So you can call singleton dot instance from anywhere in your code and get a reference to it. If it exists, it will return back the instance right here on whatever line this is. And if not, it will create a new instance of it and then return that back out. So it's essentially going to create one of these objects. This example doesn't really help a lot because it doesn't do anything. The singleton here doesn't actually do anything. So it can be a little bit confusing in my opinion. Let's look at the Unity version though because the Unity version is slightly different. And when you start searching for singletons, you're going to find a lot of stuff about non-Unity singletons, and then you'll find the sing Unity ones and see that there's 
this major difference. And that's that when we create the singletons, it's usually done in the awake method. We don't have a constructor method and we very rarely do it in a lazy method like this uh, get where or you instantiate or create an object. And that's because you can't new up a game object and have a reference to it right away. If we tried to do something like that down here and say that in the instance we want to get the instance of the object or create a new one, well, we would instantiate a new game object, but that object wouldn't be ready until the next frame. So we couldn't really return it back in a usable state. So instead we do this little hack where in the awake method, we just set the instance to ourself. So we have an object already in the scene and then when it spawns, the reference is set automatically. And if somehow we end up with two of the objects in our scene or active at a time, this will actually destroy the second one. This singleton doesn't have any methods or anything that we can do though, so it's not very useful. Let's take a look at something slightly more practical. Here I've got a ship action text, which is just a script that's going on to a single text object sitting out in my canvas that I wanna be able to pop up and show some stuff on randomly throughout my game. In this example, we get the instance in awake, but just by setting the instance to this, you can see the instance is on line eight, it's a static instance of this exact object or ship action text named instance with a getter and a private setter. It's got public accessibly getter and a private setter so that it can only be set inside our own class. The awake method sets the instance to it. I don't go through the trouble of checking to see if the instance already exists and destroying the object because I know that in my game that's just not a scenario that I'm going to need to deal with and by the time that I get around to a scenario where I'm bouncing around different scenes and things I may completely refactor that and that's an important thing to remember when it comes to these singletons. This is a singleton right now. It makes it extremely easy for me to set the text of this object here as long as I've got a single thing that I want to set the text on. If I start doing a whole bunch of these though then this becomes a mess because I can't have multiple ship action texts. In that case I would start to consider doing some refactoring and changing away from singletons. Now in this case, this text is really just for me to debug stuff and it's kind of sitting up on the screen for a little while and I know I'll end up deleting it or refactoring it into something like a UI manager, which is another really common use for a singleton. And I wanna talk really quickly about a few common uses for singletons. The most common things that you're gonna find them for are, well, little hacks like this where you just want a quick reference to something. You wanna be able to get at something and you know that you'll probably just change that away or maybe it's just never going to matter you can have this ship action text up there and you'll leave it there forever but most likely just kind of throw it away but as a quick easy way to reference something another common use though is things like the input manager in fact you see that the, a lot of the built-in systems in unity are essentially singletons but they're static classes that kind of work the same as singletons in fact that's kind of the core of a singleton is the use of a static reference to the object or a static instance of the object. So some other uses, let's see, game managers, input managers, players. Players very often become a singleton and start off as a singleton. And sometimes you'll want to convert your player to not be a singleton anymore. Maybe you've got a player character that you've got set up and then you decide, oh, we need multiple player characters. One of the nice things about the singleton pattern, at least in my experience, is that usually it's very easy to refactor away from. You can search for all of the references to the instance. In fact, one of the things I like to do is just go find the first line here or find the line where I reference the instance, add in a little comment there and then try to do a build. It's gonna instantly give me all of the places that are referencing that instance and let me know about where I would need to switch away from searching for it from an instance to injecting it in, which is kind of the refactoring alternative. When you find that you've got too many singletons or you've got singletons that are problematic that you wanna get rid of, what you usually wanna do is make it so that you can pass in the object or inject the dependency into the thing that needs it. So my ship action text would probably actually just be passed into a UI manager that would then maybe have its own singleton. Or maybe the UI manager doesn't even need a singleton and it's just registering for whenever a ship action happens and it knows to pass over the event to send the text over to the ship action text without needing a singleton at all. That's definitely a very viable way to convert this. But I like to, again, start it off simple and then build from there. So let's talk about 
why singletons are hated now. What's the big problem? Why is it that everybody says, oh, you should never use singletons or I try to avoid them? And there are a couple key arguments. In fact, let's pull them up on the Wikipedia article real quick. All right, here it is, the criticism. So it says, critics consider the singleton to be an anti-pattern, which of course sounds terrible. And it says, it sound, as it introduces global state into an application often unnecessarily. And I think this is gonna be the point of contention. This in turn can place restrictions on any abstraction that uses the singleton. Per, for example, preventing concurrent use of multiple instances. Not really relevant here. Furthermore, because it often exposes a globally visible accessor, which is the public static instance, that's what they're talking about, that globally visible ac accessor, its presence complicates dependency analysis by introducing a potential dependency on the singleton in all code it's visible to. Saying that essentially that because it can be used by anything anywhere, everything needs to know if it depends on it. And things can start to depend on it. It also says that singletons violate the single responsibility principle because they're responsible for making sure there's only one of them. Although you'll see that in most of my examples, I just ignore that fact and assume that there's always only one of them and that it doesn't matter. And then you see that the other one is that they are difficult to test because they make writing loosely coupled code quite a bit harder because your dependencies are no longer injected like the alternative. They're not the ones that are passed in so that you can swap them out, but they're a single dependency that you have to be able to get out all the time. So let's hit these all in a row. The first one, global state. Global state is something that you're almost always going to have in a video game. You think about it, in a game, you've got a player, almost everything in the game needs to know about the player or needs to have some info about the player or is going to interact with the players in some way. If the things aren't interacting with the player in some way, they're probably not part of the game or they're like some sub part of an NPC. But generally, everything in your game is interacting with the player. And having global a globally accessible version of that that's easy to get at can come in really handy. Being able to just say player.transform.position or player.instance.transform.position or whatever it is that you want to figure out where the player is makes it dramatically easier than having to figure out, well, how do I get a reference to this player? Or do I have to pass this in and do I have to add in a dependency there? It's just quite a bit simpler to set up the code and to write the code. You end up writing a lot less code. And it's just fast because you're getting a direct static reference to that object. You're not doing any extra work to get to that object. You're just literally dereferencing that property there. Now, of course, you can get that same speed boost from injecting that reference, right? If you inject in the player, then you're going to get the same direct reference to it. But you do need to kind of figure out how you want to inject that. So again, I like to start with a singleton and then slowly morph things away and start binding up objects, passing in references as the kind of architecture starts to come together. But I always, almost always start with a singleton that's globally accessible so I can figure out where those connections are going to be and then decide later if I need to clean that up. Now, let's go on to the next part here, which says that it prevents concurrent use of multiple instances. Instances. And in most of the cases for our game dev stuff, if we're making something a singleton, that's exactly what we want. We only want one instance of it. We only want one in our game. Our game might be a single player game. It only has one thing. It might have a single enemy. It only has that one reference to the enemy. We don't want more or whatever the thing is. It's got to be something that we only want one of. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to have it be a singleton. But if it if there's only one of them, then it's a great use for that. So let's continue on. It says that um, it's not following the single responsibility principle. In this case, I just don't care, to be honest. Like the the extra tiny bit that it's doing isn't worth worth even talking about, in my opinion. The single responsibility principle is a great principle. It's great to follow and kind of let it guide you, but it's not something that you should enforce and strictly make your code way more complicated just to follow or abide by, in my opinion. And then the final section back here was about being difficult to test and uh, largely because that it's hard to swap things out. When you have a singleton, you're not injecting independencies, so it's hard to 
pass in mock dependencies or mock versions of things that you can fake in your tests to make the tests easily work without depending on the actual object. So instead of requiring an actual player in your unit tests, you might want like a, a mock player that doesn't work exactly like a player, but you know, just sends in commands to the enemy while you're testing the enemy or something like that. It gets very or more difficult to do when you have singletons. That said, it's not impossible to do when you have singletons. You can definitely do it. And in the Unity case, it's not very difficult at all because you can set up your play mode tests to just use prefabs that have these mock versions of them. But in my experience, the other thing is that most of the people aren't doing a whole lot of unit testing in game development. And they're, when they are doing the unit testing in game development, they're rarely running into problems where they need to mock things out and they can't. Usually they want to test with the actual objects. I'm sure there are some scenarios where this is a big issue for people, but for the majority of people, this is not a problem at all. And singletons really just have a lot of the benefits with few of the drawbacks. So if you've been looking at ways to remove singletons from your project just because you think that they're terrible, you've heard bad things about them, my recommendation is to do it when it makes sense, when you actually need multiple references to the thing or when the singleton is actually causing you some issues. Don't do it right away, just do it as the project kind of grows and the architecture adjusts. If you find that you have tons and tons of singletons, then you should probably start looking at how to start data binding and how to pass in references to objects. It's really not very complicated. Usually I just make a method called bind, pass in the objects that I want it to know about, and then call it. Pretty simple. And then just cache those in, the, in that method. So you can do something similar to that and restructure your code if needed. But I would say start with the singletons or at least start being open to them at least if you're not. And if you haven't been convinced at all, please um, argue down below and, and let me know because I'm curious if everybody totally disagrees or um, if anybody has been maybe convinced. Also, don't forget to check out Serenix and the new Odin Validator. Their products will help you speed up your workflow just like they do for me. So click the link in the description below to check them out.